Hello and welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Feltham Young Offenders Institution, or more commonly known as HM Prison Feltham, is a prison for male juveniles and young offenders. Occupying 45 acres of southwest of Feltham in London Borough of Hounslow, it's operated by Her Majesty's Prison Service. The original Feltham Institution was built after 1857 and opened on the 1st of January 1859 as an industrial school and was taken over in 1910 by the prison commissioners as their second Borstal institution. The current institution was formed in 1991 as a result of a merger between Felton Borstal and the Ashford Remand Centre. It's managed directly by Her Majesty's Prison Service, rather than management being contracted out to a private firm. Publicity of a pre-2005 wave of violence of the institution was coupled with alleged racism amongst certain officers. These reports took as case in point the murder of Zahid Mubarak by racist cellmate Robert Stewart on the day that Mr Mubarak was due for release. Proposals made to distance Her Majesty's Prison Feltham from its reputation included a renaming such as to HMP Bedfont Lakes receiving scant support. An inspection by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons was made in May 2005. The 2005 report highlighted the progress made and praised the effective reception and induction procedures and the outreach team that deal with self-harm issues and the measures in place to deal with race relation issues. Voluntary sector work takes place within Feltham and its voluntary sector coordinator manages performance of more than 25 agencies for those convicted and placed on remand or detained pending a trial. Another inspection was made in July 2013 which was critical of what was considered an excessive use of force by prison staff in some incidents which had taken place in 2012 and an unacceptably high level of violence in the institution. On the 4th of September 2013, the Ministry of Justice announced that it was undertaking a feasibility study on replacing the existing buildings at Feltham with a new larger adult prison and youth detention centre. A 2014 inspection of the prison found that the progress that had been made in some areas, but there were still some major concerns such as levels of violence remaining high, although with fewer incidents than previously and prisoners having a lack of activities available and being kept locked up in cells for long periods. Among three ex-prisoners who came forward to the BBC in 2015, one reported seeing another having his head being stamped on. Feltham in 2015 was the most violent prison in England and Wales, having hosted 894 attacks or fights, so serious and demonstrable that proportionate prescribed legal punishments were imposed. Among these, inmates who have committed acts of violence may be kept in their own accommodation for 23 hours a day, seeing one free hour from solitary confinement. Officers knew of 48 gangs in 2015 among the teenagers, changing population of Felton's interned. Young adults and juveniles occupy different residential units today. Units housing young adult offenders hold approximately 60 prisoners. Units housing juveniles hold 30 prisoners. And almost all the juvenile rooms are for single occupation. There is a mixture of double and single accommodation for young offenders, mostly double. All rooms have integral sanitation and TV and all areas operate the IEP scheme, incentives and earned privilege scheme. The prison's regime including education, full and part-time education, workshops, vocational training in the construction industry, farms and garden works and also NVQs. Various types of offending behaviour groups are also available. Other features include the use of voluntary agencies, one-to-one -one teaching, substance misuse work and pre-release courses. An unannounced inspection of 2017 found that the juvenile units taken together were not safe for either staff or boys and that the violence had increased in the section for older young men, prompting a commons debate. A serious assault on a staff member took place during the inspection. The prison was criticised for the 23 hour detention in that although exercise was possible, showers were not on those days and sought to improve this. Healthcare was good and mental health care listed as impressive. Efforts to resettle offenders back in the community after release were also good. In popular culture there's the hard fight track of Feltham is singing out which refers to the prisoners. Grime artist JME refers to Feltham in his track Tottenham. There was a televised film called Scum in 1979 which typifies the violence of many such institutions before a key stage of national reform. Its broadcasting unwillingly was delayed to match that reform. The original Felton was built in 1854 as an industrial school and was taken over in 1910 by the prison commissioners as their second Borstal institution. The existing buildings opened as a romance centre in March 1988. The current HM Prison and Young Offender Institution Feltham was formed by the amalgamation of Ashford Remand Centre and Feltham Borstal in 1990. 
The establishment is split into Felton A, which holds young people aged 15 to 18, and Felton B, which holds young adults aged 18 to 21. Felton A, there are seven units for young people. Each unit holds 30 people. Almost all the cells are single occupation. All cells have an integral sanitation and television unit. Alpine Enhanced Support Unit, Curlo, the Induction and Reverse Cohort Unit, Dunlin, the Normal Location, Eagle, the Normal Location Enhanced Privileges Unit, and Falcon, the Reintegration Unit. Lastly, there is Heron, Normal Location, J, Normal Location. Felton B, there are 10 units for young adults, including Kingfisher as the first night and induction unit. All rooms have integral sanitation and TV as well. Kingfisher is the induction unit with 53 beds. Lapwing is closed. Mallard is a normal location with 55 beds. Nightingale is a normal location with 55 beds. Osprey is also closed. Partridge is a normal location housing 55. Quail, a normal location with 55 beds. Raven, a normal location with 55 beds. And Swallow, another normal location with 55 beds. Teal is a closed location and Ibis is the segregation unit. The daily regime within the establishment includes full and part-time education courses, including A-level qualifications which are run in conjunction with A4E and CFBT, distance learning courses from the Open University and from the National Extension College are supported. City and Guild courses are also available and include painting and decorating, bricklaying and motor mechanics. There's also an Open College Network course in farms and gardens. There is a gym open to all inmates which runs activities like badminton, weight training and a climbing wall. The gym also teaches various PE courses and the Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award. The A part of Felton was given an inspection in February 2021 and the B part in July 2019. The full reports can be read at the Ministry of Justice website. In their latest report the inspectors said of Felton A, Feltham A is an establishment in West London that holds children aged 15 to 18. It is jointly managed with an adjacent establishment, Feltham B, which holds young adults. At the time of our last full inspection of Feltham A in July 2019, outcomes for children had declined dramatically and we considered them to be poor, our lowest judgement. This decline was so acute that my predecessor invoked the urgent notification process for the first time in an establishment holding children. The COVID-19 pandemic emerged eight months later and managers had to implement restrictions to keep staff and children safe. At this visit, we found that these restrictions had been implemented appropriately and despite a significant outbreak of COVID-19 among the staff, the establishment had experienced very few cases among the children itself. Since our last inspection, progress had been made and remarkably in the middle of a pandemic, Children were split into groups of four, in which they accessed education and other activities. We found that being in small groups had improved the quality of relationships between children and staff. Self-harm had reduced dramatically with only five incidents recorded in the previous six months, compared to 242 in the same period before our previous inspection. The number of violent incidents had also fallen, although one in five children felt unsafe at the time of our visit, and there was a concerning rise in multi-perpetrator assaults as friction between different groups increased. The enhanced support unit had been relaunched and there was a positive ethos enabling children to spend more time out of their cell, including for education and interventions. Health services were generally good with very few waiting lists for clinics, and the dental service was particularly proactive and had established itself as an urgent care centre. This ensured that children could access treatment in the early stages of the pandemic. Time out of the cell had also improved since our last inspection. On average, children received about four and a half hours a day during the week and three and a half hours during the weekend. This included face-to-face -face education, which had been consistently delivered since June 2020. There were some areas where progress was not as good. Support for children to maintain contact with family and friends needed improvement to make sure that video and in-person visits were accessed by all children who wanted them. While the improvement made at Feltame is commendable, some of this reflects how bad things have been in the time of the urgent notification. Headway has been made with a far smaller population than usual and the challenge for local and national leaders is to consolidate and build on this progress as the population increases. And in their report on Felton B, they said that Felton B holds convicted male prisoners aged between 18 and 20. It's situated adjacent and comes under the same management as Felton A, which holds boys aged between 15 and 17. At the time of this inspection, the prison held around 360 prisoners. The prison was last inspected in January and February 2017, when we found that outcomes for prisoners in three or four of our healthy prison tests, safely, purposefully, actively, and rehabilitation and release planning were not sufficiently good. 
Overall, the results of this inspection mark a significant achievement for an establishment that has faced similar pressures to many others that have not been able to maintain, let alone improve their overall level of performance in recent times. Having expressed concerns elsewhere that Feltham had been left without a governor for some five months during 2018, I am reassured to be told that two parts of the establishment will in future each have their own dedicated deputy governor in an effort to ensure greater resilience and continuity. I hope that this will allow Felton B to continue to make progress and avoid the risk of managerial focus being diverted to address the many problems we found during the inspection of Felton A. The progress that has been made to date at Felton B was credible and reflected in the fact that in the space of some two years it had managed to achieve or partially achieve around half of our recommendations from the last inspection. In terms of safety, there were distinct weaknesses in the strategic management of violence, the use of disciplinary procedures through the incentives and earned privileges scheme and oversight of the use of force. However, the weaknesses were to some extent ameliorated by good relationships between staff and prisoners, and compared with other similar establishments, fewer prisoners felt unsafe at the time of the inspection, and fewer reported being victimised. A feature of the establishment that needed attention was the impact that security processes were having on the ability of prisoners to access education, training, work and healthcare. It was telling that our colleagues from Offset commented that across the prison, managers did not do enough to ensure that all aspects of the prison regime contributed to prisoners' good attendance and punctuality. Quite apart from whether prisoners were getting to the activities to which they had been allocated, there was also the issue that there were only sufficient full-time activity places for just over half the population. Meanwhile, some 20% of the entire population were employed as residential unit cleaners and painters, where they were under-occupied and poorly managed. We also found that when we conducted the roll checks, some 37% of prisoners were locked in their cells during the working day, which is far too high a figure for a training prison. Living conditions in the residential units had improved since the last inspection, but the condition of cells was no more than adequate. There was still too much graffiti and there was still a pressing need for refurbishment in some areas, particularly the showers. Although the quality of healthcare services was generally good, prisoners, as noted above, were all too often unable to get to their appointments because of regime restrictions or security measures. For instance, in June, prisoners failed to attend 58% of the appointments made with a doctor, around 35% with a dentist and 80% with the optician. This was clearly an unacceptable waste of NHS resources. It was pleasing to see that the well-led and well-organised Offender Management Unit had reduced the backlog of Offender Assessment System, or OASYS, initial assessment from 56% to 19% in the space of six months. Felton B is a complex and challenging establishment, in which to achieve the outcomes that should be of real benefit to prisoners and public alike. It was reassuring that some real progress had been made since our last inspection. Clearly there was still much to do, but we were heartened by the positive attitude by many of the staff about what could be achieved, and the sound relationships between many staff and prisoners that underpinned much of the progress that they had already been made. Clearly there was still much to do, but we were heartened by the positive attitude of many of the staff about what could be achieved, and the sound relationships between many staff members and prisoners that underpinned much of the progress that had already been made. We have seen in the past that progress at this complex establishment has proved to be fragile. I hope that on this occasion it will prove possible to build on what has been achieved and sustain it into the future. Now we're going to look at a prison officer who sent sexual images to teenage inmates and smuggled in parcels who was recently jailed. A married prison officer who felt rejected by her husband sent sexual images of herself to two teenage boys at a young offender institution and smuggled parcels into the unit at court here. Mum of one, Jordan Trainer, who was 17 weeks pregnant with her second child, was jailed for 18 months after she admitted misconduct in a public office while working as a prison officer. Miss Trainer of Glen Eagles Drive, Normanton, developed a flirtatious relationship with an inmate after she became a prison officer at the Young Offenders Institute in June 2018. She was sentenced for these very serious offences. Prosecutor Jonathan Sharp said this progressed to her taking sexualized photographs of herself and particularly boldly printing copies of those photographs at her place of work before handing the copies to the boy. She also smuggled into the institution several parcels both for him and at the inmate's instigation other inmate. She was to say in an interview that the parcels were phone shaped though she did not actually see their contents. The Crown's position is that she knew full well these were phones and that she admitted that she was aware she was committing an offence by bringing these items into the institution. Mr Sharp said that Miss Trainer knew a second 17 year old inmate had a mobile phone and started sending him sexualised text messages and sexualised photographs. 
Indeed, she was regularly asked colleagues to swap shifts so that she could be working where the inmate would be, and a message that she sent to him on the morning of December the 23rd, 2019, provides a clear indication of her feelings towards him. It read, Can't wait to see you today. I miss your face. Kiss. Mr. Sharp said that gossip was rife at the Young Offender Institution, and searches of both boys' cells were carried out on December the 23rd, 2019. Each had a record of the defendant's personal mobile number and the first inmate still had the two photographs. The second boy had three mobile phones which were seized and examined. Miss Trainer was stopped as she arrived for work and was suspended from duty. She was then sent the second boy a message which read, I'll not see you again now, I've been suspended. And after receiving no reply, later she sent another message which read, Full of conversation, aren't you? Mr. Sharp said that it appears not to have occurred to her that his phone was by then in the hands of the authorities. Miss Trainer admitted what she had done was wrong when she was arrested and interviewed on January 25th, 2020. Mr. Sharp said as to her motivation, she candidly admitted that in relation to the first inmate, she liked the attention. Mr. Sharp said that Miss Trainer told the police the first boy had blackmailed her into doing some of the things she had done. Jane Edwards, mitigating, said that Miss Trainer has a three year old child and is 17 weeks pregnant with her second child. Miss Edwards said that Miss Trainer has the support of her family and friends in her previous role as a prison officer at Feltham Young Offenders Institution in London, before she and her husband moved to Yorkshire to support his career. The court heard that after the move, her husband went onto a two week training course away from home. Miss Edwards said that he barely spoke to her and he told her that he needed space. She said she only received a couple of text messages from him during that time. She felt that she had to rebuild her life. She was aged 24 with a child who was not two yet. She felt unsupported and rejected by her husband, the man she had moved to support. She felt rejected by other prison officers. She felt they mocked her London accent. She began drinking heavily, up to 12 cans of Stella a day and would not have been unusual for her. Miss Edwards said that Miss Trainer has suffered with mental health since she was a teenager and had recently been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Miss Edwards said that Miss Trainer did not know anyone in Yorkshire, adding that she felt that these two 17 year old prisoners were essentially her only two friends, the only people she had to talk to. She said that she doesn't understand how she let this happen. Miss Edwards said that as for the explicit photographs, she said she was just happy someone was paying her some interest. She foolishly provided him with some photographs, the two found in his cell. He asked her to bring in vodka and cigarettes, and asked for more explicit photographs, but she refused. She was told her photos and phone would be passed to the governor if she didn't do what she was asked. She said messages were sent to her saying that she could go to prison for what she had done. She said that she was told to swap shifts, which she did, and was asked to pass notes, which she did. Miss Edwards said that Miss Trainer brought in four packages on one occasion and did not know what was in them. Miss Edwards said that Miss Trainer's marriage broke down after she was arrested. She has a new partner now, and he is much more supportive of her. He is the father of her unborn child. Judge Simon Phillips QC told Miss Trainer, The court has heard you engaged in flirtatious behaviour with these inmates, which clearly you enjoyed. It's been said that on your behalf that these two inmates were the only two people you could turn to. I don't accept that. There was a hierarchy. There were colleagues who you could, if you had chosen to, turn to for support. You chose not to do that. Jailing Miss Trainer for 18 months, Judge Phillips said, As a former prison officer, serving any sentence is a challenging and difficult prospect in terms of the reception you may receive from other inmates. After the sentencing hearing, Detective Sergeant Alice Coates of Leeds District Prison Crime Team said, As a prison officer, and particularly as one working within offenders, Miss Trainer would have been in no doubt that her actions were a very clear breach of her professional responsibilities as someone in a position of trust. Officers from Leeds District Prison Crime Team worked closely with staff at the Young Offenders Institute to ensure a full and thorough investigation was carried out, which has resulted in Miss Trainer being convicted and sentenced for these very serious offences. So what are your thoughts on Felton Prison? Are there any stories we missed? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, stay safe.